Welcome back, guys and girls. Things get crazier every time I say hello. And here we are once more, high above the Riverport Bay with a stutter. That's looking psycho. And we just took out a ton of people on the bridge, trying to meet up with Beth and the doctor. Paul Serene is worried. Martin Hatch has been arrested. Will, the wise words of Will, are still trying to be deciphered. Seems like something's up here. Right over there. Thank you very much. Got some points. How many we got? All six Corona sources in this little chapter found. Um, I've got four points. Uh, we'll do that just to try to level up everything. And now I need six and twelve uh, to grab a, a third time dash. Oh, there's also increased power at the time shield and reduced cooldown sound whenever. Um... But I'm happy to upgrade as much as I can. We still got more Cronon sources to find, hopefully. Uh, why does this look dangerous? A long, long yellow hallway. Kind of freaking me out here. Okay, you ready? I feel like we're gonna need to time dash across. Seems incredibly spooky. <gasps> Stutter. Okay. <gasps> uh oh. Oh no. Please don't collapse. Oh my, maybe it will just collapse. Mama mia, mama mia. How long will the stutter last? Not very long. And the boat is gonna crash. Breaking through the bridge like glass. Oh my goodness. This would make such a sick movie. I mean, I guess that's kind of the TV show. I just wanna see some of the more of the stutter stuff in the TV show. Jack, don't die. Are you trapped? Oh, we are so trapped. Holy cow. Pulling some Cirque du Soleil maneuvers up here. Grab the French toast. This is getting delicious. Oh, no. This is so bad. Okay, everything has been freaked out. I knew I'd be dead if the stutter collapsed while I was huh. in the frozen crash. Yeah. I had to reach solid ground in the deck of the cargo ship was my best bet. Just had to find a way down. Okay. Whoa! So many stutters, so little time. It's like contractions. Time is about to have a baby. And he's cranky. But coming real soon, no matter what we say. Now what? Okay, apparently I ran right into the car and decapitated myself. Hey, anyhow, uh, I, I don't know if I need to dash or freeze or freeze dash. I tried to do a freeze dash there, but they didn't like it. Find hidden quantum ripples. I wonder how many quantum ripples I found. I guess one of them had to be last episode, the TV show episode three, uh, where you heard like that creepy story being read over the intercom. That was something we unlocked in the garage uh, in act three of the gameplay. So that definitely is from there. Hey, I just Frozen dashed crash through. was a mess. Somehow oh, I had to find my way across. Yeah, oh, this is terrifying. Goodness. Running on <laughs> freaking highway signs, but we ain't on the highway. Okay, freeze that car, jump on it, and get back on the concrete. Um, that's not gonna work. Aha. Uh -huh. Rewind this stuff. Dash through just to make sure we're safe. And we're golden. I kept heading downwards. Towards the cargo ship. Yeah. <gasps> Rewinding a little bit. That's freaking Friday. Uh-oh. Oh, gosh. Okay, we gotta move the quick. This is not good. Exactly user -friendly. Yeah. Oh! Much worse. <laughs> this was what ended. Yeah, Jack, you're gonna have to cut that, cut that thought, cause we just killed you. Sorry. We'll get you back, though. I'm bringing you right back. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Bring me back. Bring me back. My only complaint about this game so far is the load times are a little long. Other than that, though, I like freaking in love with this. Okay, let's do this again then here. Um, we gotta rewind this. Sprint across. 
kept heading downwards towards the cargo ship. Right, this all freaks out here. Freaks out and breaks, and we'll just be a little more careful so we don't accidentally kill ourselves. Down wasn't exactly user friendly. Okay. <gasps> the fracture was getting much worse. Timelines getting scrambled. Caught in violent loops, off sync, crashing into each other. This was what the end of time would look like. Everything was broken, in chaos, frozen, and no one would know. Yeah, we just all end, I guess. Okay. Balance beam walking. Nice boat. Let's go. Oh, hold still. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy, Jack. Good skills. Whoa. Objects were moving out of time, out of order, tire timelines overlapping. And it was gonna get worse, unless we could stop it. Okay then, Jack. Back at the swimming pool. I don't understand the power you're wielding. You need to hand this technology over to Monarch. I've prepared for what happens next. You say you're prepared, but no part of this plan of yours involves stopping it from happening. Even if I fix William's machine, what could you possibly hope to achieve? The end of time is coming. There's no way to- Hey! This isn't a debate. I just watched a ship fast forward through a fucking bridge. Time is running out. And the fracture's getting worse by the minute. And it cannot be stopped. Paul has been to the end of time. He's witnessed it firsthand. Can't you see? We prepared for what's next out of necessity. Your research is based on work by William Joyce. You respected him. He knew that the fracture would occur, but he also knew that it could be fixed. Will built a way to stop the fracture. This. The countermeasure. We're traveling to the past to retrieve it. You can help us get there faster. Or... You can agree to disagree. I'll have to run diagnostics on the machine. I can't promise anything before that. Nick, take Amaral to the machine. Keep an eye on her. You got it. Welcome to the team, Doc. Don't make me shoot you. Back at HQ, feels a little bit safer here. Jack, <sighs> before we head downstairs, we have to talk about something. Okay. Back at the swimming hall. You know what? Dr. Sophia Amaral, she reminds me of Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. If she was older, maybe a little more foreign, but the blue dress, the haircut, maybe that's why she knows so much about time travel. She actually is Elizabeth, and she's been through all this sort of crazy chaos before. Up in the sky, Columbia, where the steel birds fly, quite literally, because I'm not talking about airplanes. But let's explore around here for a second, and then Beth wants to have a word with me, I guess. So we'll sit down and speak with her uh, before we go meet Nick and Sophia down below. Let's check this out real quick first. Martin Hatch, what we know. This was the guy delivering the speech at the gala. Name's Martin Hatch. According to Monarch Radio, he's been deemed a traitor. Sabotaged a monarch lab. Hmm. Potential ally? Not even close. So he randomly appears in 2001. He's confirmed in Sophia's kidnapping. Time machine sabotage, maybe. Death of Dr. Kim, maybe. Destruction of treatment, we know that's true. Accused Sophia being responsible for this. Helped Charlie Wincott escape. Confirmed. Currently helping Charlie reach Monarch Tower undetected. Disobeyed orders. Sabotaging Serene. Wants to take over Monarch. Why? Doesn't believe countermeasure could stop Fracture. Works for Monarch, therefore believes any time is inevitable. Then why attempt to sabotage it? He's a freak. That's a fact. 
Don't know why he wants to act the way he does. He's a quack. Martin Hatch bringing back the end of time. That's a fact. I can't get in there yet, so let's talk to Beth first. What's this? Okay, what's up? It's about the plan. If Amaral gets the machine working... We go back to yesterday and undo all of this. Listen. In the video Will left for me, he said the countermeasure was stolen from his workshop on July 4th, 2010. He also said I took it. Maybe I did, Jack. We have a time machine. You're saying we go to 2010. We steal it. If Will was right, that would mean it wouldn't be a change. We take the countermeasure, bring it to the present, fix the fracture, save the world. Okay. Explain to me why that's a better plan than just going back to yesterday and preventing all this from happening in the first place. Because I'm afraid that based on what I know about time travel, we can't change anything. The past has already happened. We can't change it. But my way, we don't have to. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my plan still feels simpler. Let's just get the machine working. So... The issue here is that if they go back to yesterday, it's all still inevitable somehow, some way, because of things in the past. But if they go back and steal the countermeasure... Because Will says that's what happened, so we have to live this out. But the interesting thing is, if Will said that's what's happened, and we're living that out, then Will also knew that nothing was different, and we're still then living into a scenario where things are screwed up. So somehow we're going to have to make a difference, a change. And that looks like a giant Game Boy. I know it's a, just a radio thing, but it looks like a giant old Game Boy. Um, some, somewhere, like, we're living out what has already happened, because it already happened, because we already went there, because it's in the past, if that makes any sense to you. Like, even though... Beth hasn't time traveled back there. In 2010, she already appeared there because it was in the past. And based on the future, she already did and already went back. So it happened already, even though we don't know it happened already. So we have to fulfill that. But what I'm saying is, uh, maybe maybe there is just one true timeline and we're destined to fulfill that. And we're helping Charlie, but nothing needs to be altered because Paul doesn't know we're helping Charlie and what we're doing. So all that matters is fulfilling Charlie's vision, not Paul's. Beth's 2010 plan. Bless the charge and plan for the... Beth's charts and plans for the plan to travel to 2010 and steal the countermeasure. Okay, that makes sense. Now, let's go in here and hear the little radio. I want to see what's up with him after that truck crash on the bridge. Hello, Riverport. It's Bobby Radford, and, uh, well, you know where we're at, don't you? The poor Donnelly Bridge is gone, and God knows how many people are gone with it. You ever heard that Hindenburg thing, you know, with the guy going, Oh, the humanity, oh, the humanity. Jesus, I know how he felt. I don't understand how that happened. I hear the people on the boat were saying the bridge was up. Video footage says it wasn't, that the boat just rammed into it. It's insane. It's... Oh, Christ, Riverport's in so much trouble now, folks. We need someone to declare a state of emergency or something. But nobody's doing a goddamn thing. And nobody's talking about the fact that Monarch had set up an illegal roadblock right on that bridge, searching all the cars. No warrants, no due process, no nothing. Just near where their goddamn fancy mansion blew up. And now, this ship rams the bridge. That's a coincidence? That ain't no goddamn coincidence. We got that, and now we've got reports of car accidents happening all over the town. We've got... Why isn't somebody doing something? Huh? Hello, Mayor! You're asleep at the goddamn wheel! Wake up! What the hell? I mean, he's pissed, but rightfully so. We'll be right back. Yeah, man. Not a happy camper. Dr. Amaral seems convinced that Paul's been to the end of time. Do you think that's true? Can't be. Otherwise, trying to prevent it would be pointless. Why? Because it's already happened. Huh? If it's in the future, can't we adjust that somehow? Let's see how Dr. Amaral's doing with the time machine. Like, even if Paul Serene's been to the yeah. end of time, can't we... Wouldn't we be able to make an, an alteration? Why would Paul lie about that? He says he's seen it. It confuses me. That's part. Any Chronon sources in here, ladies and gents? 
Guess not. Time machine. I was gonna say trio, but now we got four. We're the quad. Did you find anything? I'm not sure. I'll go check. Hey Jack, come check this out. All right, let's talk to him first. Hey. What you got going on? Shouldn't you be keeping an eye on Amaral? Yeah, but I figure what I'm doing is more important. Which is? Okay, what is all this? I dug through the area and I found everything I could on your bro. You gotta see this video I found, man. Check out the TV. And everything else I, I put on those tables over there. Okay. You should probably see how Dr. Amaral's doing. Yeah, I got you. I will, but I wanna... What's, what's on the TV? Date is. The date is. It's. It's February twenty eighth. Jesus. Nineteen ninety nine. William Joyce. Nineteen ninety nine. Right. After months. First experiment. Arduous work. My machine is finally ready for human testing. Ready is defined by me since ready is obviously a relative term when you're dealing with the deformation of the chronon field and recreating of black holes mass density by tangent. Okay. In short summary. Built the time machine. It works. I'm gonna prove it or die. Okay. Just need to make some final preparations. When I enter the machine, I will travel clockwise around the corridor. Okay. Core is active. Chronon levels are stable. I'll travel clockwise around the corridor, exiting back into the same location in the near future. Oh. This clock is set to my watch. Now, when I exit the machine, there should be a significant difference in time between my watch and the clock in this room. The corridor is locked in place. Okay, setting the date to five minutes to the future for the first test. Now, admittedly, traveling to the past would be much more impressive, but I can't travel backwards in time only as far as the first activation the machine's core, which is well, now. Okay. Machine's ready. Monitor is stable. What I'm about to do is gonna change the very fabric of I don't remember. Poor William. Trying to activate that time machine for the first time. It looked painful, but obviously it, it, it worked. What's here? What's on the computer? I've been posting my theories about Monarch on a bunch of forums. Oh, God. Monarch built a playground of it's death and cool. right now. I used an alias. Blanche McDougal. Yep. <laughs> I'm a chick. But then he put uh, Nick in all caps there. What is the point of Operation Clock Stop? As far as I can put together, I'll see the numbers. Oh god, the zip code thing. Morse code. Rittum Meat Man. Oh my god, this guy is crazy. Secretly not Blanche McDougal. G Gabe says whatever. This sounds a lot like Taxi Guy. <laughs> Gas prices are secret number codes or treasure coordinates. Gas is owned by oil companies. Who is using to know? Monarch. What drugs are you on? I've seen ghosts. Sponge Bacon agrees. Secret weapon is what's creating all the ghosts. That's kind of dumb. This is definitely more about Monarch than Ghost. Oh my god. How to locate the meat man? <laughs> for Chupacabra for real. Black Swan, this is going somewhere. Oh my god. That's insane. Alright, what's up? Any more words for me? Any news on Monarch out there? Ooh, a ripple. Well, people are pissed as hell. But Monarch seems to be looking for you pretty hard. Been asking on a bunch of forums about your whereabouts. You want me to throw him off track? Uh, uh, yes. Sure. Post that I was seen hiding in a catering van or something. Love it. Consider it done. All right. So I'm guessing Nick then will make that uh, adjustment to the timeline in the next episode. Looks like he tested time travel with rats first. Oh, look at the cute little rat drawing. It's adorable. Why am I not surprised that Will's hamster was a test subject? <laughs> Looks like Schrodinger got a raw deal. Poor hamster. Poor hamster. 
It's Will's journal. Ooh. Everything's in here. All the secrets he kept from us. Oh, man. If he just told me about all of this, I could have... It's best not to think about that. He spent 11 years building that thing. Abandoned everything else, including me. Now I know why. All right. You ready for this one? It looks like it's going to be an emotional one. Uh, entry 63. I just got back from the funeral. My parents are dead. Feels like I was just told about the crash an hour ago. It isn't real yet. Staying there, I was numb to it all, weighed down under some sit expectation to emote in a manner that suited the situation, as if I needed to cry to appease the crowd. Jack was always the younger brother copying me. In that graveyard, our roles were strangely reversed. Tears were running down my brother's face, and I was observing him like some alien, desperately trying to learn to feel. Looking at the pain in his eyes, I wasn't thinking about my parents at all. Only Jack. Death is supposed to bring the living closer together, but I've never felt more distant from somebody I cared for so dearly. It tears me up inside that I can't protect him from what he's going through. I can't ease his pain. Aw, I don't have the social proficiency to wield my empathy into some well-articulated apology that'll make him forget this. The irony is that the only cure for his pain is time. Oh my god, is that why he went... <gasps> is that why he's gonna go back and... Oh my god, time. Ever since February 28th, 1999, the concept has been given new meaning. The experiment was meant to give hope, not take it away. What I was told that day has haunted me ever since. The very notion of a fracture in time has overshadowed everything since, even this. I don't need to see the future to know that I will let him down. I can't be the parental figure that Jack has lost. I can't be the brother that he needs. It's Christmas, I can't even give him that. No one can. There's nothing I want more than to protect him, and there's only one way I know how to do that with certainty. I'll finish the countermeasure. I'll make sure that the dangers I was warned of that day never come to pass. I can't fix the past, but it's not too late for the future. Okay, so he wasn't going to go back in time to save his parents what I initially thought, but he did know on February 20th, 1999, apparently about the fracture, and he was looking to save it. Which is crazy that he knew about it then. Uh, I try to forget that period. My bleeding clock? Red oh, Tears of Romance? My God. Wow. Please say there's a CD. That's kind of creepy. Dude, I already got it in the stereo. Oh, God. Yes! <laughs> Alright, so we checked... Out. Okay, play this music. God damn it, you guys. You know, this song really speaks to me. Uh-huh. Your true weapon is obviously the healing power of your music. Okay, Beth, thanks for your snotty comments. We don't need your snide I mean, remarks. It's not even that bad. I could totally bone to this. Okay, thanks, Nick, for all the... Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Extra info we day not need. Uh, I guess we'll go talk to Dr. Amaral. See what she's up to, see what she's figured out, and hopefully make some progress on solving the time stop. The end of time, it's coming sooner than you think, and we will continue that when we return. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Fantastic day. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're ready for the next one, give it a thumbs up again. Two thumbs up. That's what I give Quantum Break, so we got to get back soon. Until that time, drink so much. All thanks again, and we will see you all later.